seen from 150 million years ago, Archaeopteryx, the first dinosaur that started to show signs of being like our modern birds. Yeah, you've guessed it, the first topic of our wildlife watch, birds. The thing that makes birds so special and the thing that sparks our imagination is their ability to fly. For years and years, humans have been trying to conquer flight, but try as they might, they've got something very important missing. These and another very important adaptation. So, feathers are made of a protein called keratin, which is the same protein that is in our hair, in our nails, and also in other animals, horns and antlers and things like that. So it's all the same protein. Because of that, they are really durable, but also they have the ability to tear and repair. That's tied down to tiny barbules which act like a zipper, so just like on your school bag or on your pencil case. Feathers are amazing for flight, but there's another adaptation which also is a massive help, and that is their bones. So unlike you or I, birds' bones are hollow, and inside they are supported by a network of mesh, which is almost like a steel bridge in its support system. This doesn't only mean that they're super strong, it also means they're super light. So we've come to the edge of this reservoir and this beautiful nature reserve to meet some bird experts and find out some more. He's everywhere. <laughs> so today we've been lucky enough to be invited along to meet some bird ringers and today we're going to be able to see those birds up close and personal in the hand and find out a lot more. And as you can see they're very very busy having a close look at all the birds that have been caught this morning. The birds are caught in a very, very, very safe way on a mist net, which are the finest, softest nets, which keep the birds really nice and safe. So what they're doing is they are ringing them, and every ring has a special number. They put these on really, really carefully using some very special implements, and all the people here today have gone through lots and lots of training to make sure they do this in the best way for the birds and can find out loads and loads of stuff. They're also weighing them measuring their wings and they can tell how old they are just by their wings so it's really really clever because of all this information we can actually tell where the birds have come from and how far they've traveled and it just gives us a little bit more information about what's happening in the migration and also if they need any help this is a female tree. <laughs> so sometimes you can easily tell which bird's which by using its plumage. For example, a red orangey breast and brown back is a robin. Or blue tits have very distinctive look as well. But sometimes you have to, with trickier birds, use some other things as well to help you, which you can use ID books. Obviously talk to experts and they can tell you as well. There's also apps for your phone. There's all sorts of things that can help you ID more birds and get a bit more of an expert yourself. So in birds, the male tends to be much brighter and much more colourful and the female tends to be much more subdued and that's because she needs to protect her chicks and make sure they stay nice and safe from any predators. So another way to uh, tell birds apart is by using their call. So you can hear calling in the background now, but that's actually a recording which is attracting the birds and enabling them, the bird ringing group to do what they're doing now. Now, there's not as many calls around this time of year because obviously the migration and birds have left, but you can start to recognise some bird song. Again, you can use apps or you can just learn them and try and get some differentiation with what you've seen. And if you just learn one or two bird balls, it's all really good because it's nice to be able to share with a friend that you know what that bird is. So the curious thing about bird calls is that they're mostly male and they're either saying, go away to another male or come and have a look to a female. So another great way of identifying birds and especially what family they are and what they eat is to look at their bills. So a really sharp beak, almost like tweezers, are for eating insects. So 
then you get more of a kind of um, a stumpy bill, which is for eating seeds, so for example, on the yellow hammer or the red pole. The bird that takes it a step further is the tree creeper. So you can see its bills really curved and that's allowing it to get under bark and get out all the invertebrates. There's another bird called the curlew which lives on the mud flats near the coast and that one used it to get the invertebrates out from under the mud. I was really lucky enough to see earlier one of our birds of prey who's got a very interesting bill indeed. So it was a female kestrel and she had a really sharp beak, perfect for tearing at prey and talons to pin it down. <coughs> If you're going to think about the most impressive bill that you might find in your garden, I think it might be this bird over here. So this is a great spotted woodpecker which has a bill that can drill holes in trees and also is a very prolific predator. Wow, I think there's no better way to finish our wildlife watch all about birds. Maybe you can go out now and have an explore and see what you can find out about the birds in your garden and local wild spaces. But I think I'm going to stay here just a little bit longer and see what else I can find out today.